This is Game Chat 1, episode 137. Tencent's Patriotic Battle. Wow. You found Game Chat with Buona. Welcome to the show. Now here's your host, Buona McCall, with all the gaming news of this week. Uh, by the way, that's me. Greetings, folks, and welcome to episode 137 of Game Chat with Buona. We got a great show lined up for you. We got about uh, one, two, five. five stories to talk about today. A lot of EA news and uh, a lot of battle royale related stuff so we're going to be talking about that kind of stuff a little bit about anthem and some monster hunter world updates Ooh, haven't talked about that in quite some time i hope you guys are enjoying the podcast if you didn't catch game chat born episode 137 last week we had a pretty good story talking about psionics and the valve index virtual reality headset so subscribe wanted.tv slash podcast and get your podcast on also check out my other podcast named b rants we're going to be publishing something soon probably about avengers endgame going to be talking about movie stuff oh boy it's going to be spoiler spoiler written so if you haven't seen the movie definitely don't listen to that podcast got a great show lined up for you let's do it Hey, for our first story, we're going to talk about Apex Legends. Wow, Apex Legends. We haven't talked about this in quite some time. This was a new darling on the Battle Royale front over from the folks from EA Origin, or I should say EA on Origin. And uh, it, it was a, it's, it's a refreshing take on the, the Battle Royale genre. It had a, a, a very fluid movement system taken from the Titanfall series. And uh, it had a lot of communication breakthroughs, which allowed players to talk to each other without using microphones, which was one of the reasons why I said in one of my YouTube videos, especially why the game was so successful. This article comes by way of a Dextero doc, or Dexerto, man, my dyslexia. I didn't know I had it. <laughs> Dexerto.com. EA reveals plans to release Apex Legends on mobile devices and i can't say i'm surprised about this announcement because battle royale on mobile despite what you may or may not think is very very popular uh, the article says that apex legends hit the ground running as soon as it launched as it garnered a massive player base of 50 million players in record time but that number is soon to grow even further as it plans as it that number is soon to grow even further with plans to bring it to more consoles so on top of mobile they talked about bringing it to other devices and other platforms. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. In a May 7 conference call, EA announced that the plans, their plans to bring the popular shooter to more platforms as it looks to further grow the number of combatants to land in Kings Canyon. That's the name of the map. Uh, name of the map. Uh, in the meeting, the publisher confirmed that their Battle Royale was their fastest growing new game with, with around 30% of Apex players being new to EA. Hmm, I wonder if these are alt accounts. I don't know. Take that one with a grain of salt. With that in mind, the company said they'll be focusing on delivering new content throughout a long-term service, which will include the new legends and the like. This is kind of old news. But according to this tweet uh, review on the conference call, it's the fastest growing new game. 30% 30 are new. They're going to focus on delivering new content with long-term service. And plans to release new platforms and markets, and that includes mobile. Uh, according to this tweet, it says EA confirmed later that the conference called they plan to bring Apex Legends to China and to mobile devices. Wow. Okay. China is big. China is going to be very, very huge. And, um, well, not going to be. China is already massive. So... This game is going to, if it takes off in China, there, there's just no end in sight. Um, also, some other things from the conference call. Many players are trying game series they've never played before on Origin uh, because of Apex Legends, I'm assuming. And use engagement seen inside the subscription service to decide which games to add to the service, blah, 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 some other stuff. Nothing really 
related to Apex Legends. So congratulations to EA and the folks over at Respawn Entertainment. Uh, Apex Legends is huge. And with the expansion to China being planned and as well as mobile devices, well, eh, their purses are going to be rolling over in the fat money pockets and dough. I don't even know what I just said. Check it out, guys. Over on Deserto, Deserto.com, they got the details. EA reveals plans to release Apex Legends on mobile devices. And for our next story, we're going to talk about Tencent. And while we're on the topic of Battle Royale, we're going to talk about Tencent and PUBG Mobile. This is actually on Reuters.com. Tencent, this is their article headline. I'm going to read exactly how they posted it. Tencent pulls blockbuster game PUBG in China launches patriotic alternative. So I saw the headline and my mouth dropped. I was like, Aah! that was actually the sound I made. Um, but it turns out it's PUBG Mobile, which is still a huge deal because PUBG Mobile is massive worldwide, especially in China. Tencent Holdings LTD on Wednesday shut down its test version of the global blockbuster Player Unknown's Battlegrounds in China and shifted users to a similar, more patriotic video game, which, unlike PUBG, has regulatory appeal to generate revenue. Uh, uh, I had to check to see if this was satire. I didn't know if this was on uh, The Onion. Or something because you're gonna you're gonna trip out when you read this. But anyway, they say with PUBG Mobile having around 70 million average daily active users in China, 70 70 million daily active users in China, we expect Game for Peace. That's the name of the call, the name of the game. Game for Peace could potentially generate eight billion yuan to ten billion yuan. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. One point eight billion. Or $1.18 billion to $1.148 billion in annual revenue. My goodness. So anyway, I keep saying anyway. In a post in the official games uh on a in a post on the game's official account on China's Twitter like Weibo platform, Weibo, Tencent said it would end testing for PUBG. It also said it had launched an anti-terrorism themed game for peace, for which it gained monetization approval in April. Apparently, that's what you have to do. In China, their shares went up 2%. Gee, I wonder why. Now, get this, guys. It's almost exactly the same, according to... Uh, uh, who is this? Uh, Sui Shinyu, when she was interviewed about it, it's almost exactly the same as PUBG Mobile. The gameplay, the background, the graphic design, and the characters, they're almost the same. Um, some Weibo user said... On starting game for peace, they found themselves at a place in the game that strongly resembled the place they left off in PUBG, complete with the PUBG gaming history. So on the surface, this sounds like a complete reskin with some other changes. Um, people started to panic, though, when this first came out. On Wednesday, PUBG is gone was one of the most viewed topics on Weibo. This is their version of Twitter again. With over 300 million clicks and close to 90,000 posts. This is a, a quote from someone. I was scared to death when he realized that PUBG Mobile had been shut down in China. But I didn't expect that once I updated it to Game of Peace, it returned me back to the same level. The game changed its name and became very socialist to gain approval. This quote gets me. And I actually saw a gif of this. I'm going to die of laughter. When you shoot people, they don't bleed, and the dead get up and wave goodbye. I saw the gif of it. You kill someone in the game, they get on their knees as if they're submitting, and they wave to you goodbye. No, they, they get on their knees, they hand you the loot box that usually drops from dead people. They, like, put it on the ground, and they wave to you goodbye. And then they disappear. I have never in my life seen anything like that. It's almost like a paintball type of thing, you know, like you got me. Here's my stuff. I, you know, I'm not against that. You know, I could, I could have fun in a game like that. I'm not completely against that death mechanic, but it's just funny that it goes from one extreme to the other and in one patch and one update and they change the name to game for peace. 
Very, very interesting news. This is one of the biggest. If you go to YouTube, uh, some of you I know watch Twitch, right? And PUBG Mobile probably isn't as big on Twitch as it is on other platforms. If you go to um, like DLive.tv, even on Mixer, and if you go to YouTube, PUBG Mobile is massive in terms of streaming and content production. This mobile version of PUBG, people play on PC. This is what you need to understand. They play PUBG Mobile on an emulator, a PC emulator. So they use keyboard and mouse controls on the mobile game. And I think the reason why people prefer and play PUBG Mobile is because it has a lot more cosmetics, has a lot more features than PUBG. And I actually think it runs better, which is kind of funny. Um, this, is, this is an opinion from other people say it runs better. I don't know if it does. I think it runs better. I am flabbergasted at this this story how this is one of the biggest games. In a website statement, Tencent described Game for Peace as a tactical shooting game developed in-house, which, quote, pays tribute to the blue sky warriors that guard our country's airspace, unquote. In reference to the Chinese Air Force. So they, they've, they've turned it into a patriotic game. And I, I can see why it got, it got monetization approval. I mean, that's, that's, that, that's very China-like. That's very, very China-like. Check it out, guys. It's unbelievable. This is one, like, again, this is 70 million average daily users. This is not total. This is average, average, not, not max. Not listen to me. This is not maximum users. This is average daily actives. 70 million, seven zero. Seven zero. You can't laugh at that. People want to laugh at mobile games. You can't laugh at 70 million average daily users. I don't care who you are. It's it's nuts. It's nuts. Rulers.com has a story, guys. Tencent pulls PUBG Mobile. And renames it to Games for Peace. And it changed they changed some, some stuff in there. It'll make you raise an eyebrow. Check it out, guys. And for our next story, we're going to continue to talk about China. And uh, this article comes by way of PCGamer.com. And uh, it states that... And uh, it's kind of hard to just visualize this. But there will soon be more PC gamers in China than the total population of the United States. I'll read that again. There will soon be more PC gamers in China than the total population of the United States. That's, that's just wild. Despite a year-long licensing freeze, according to PC Gamer, on new, game on new game approvals, PC gaming in China is a 16 billion industry. By 2023, there will be an estimated 354 million PC gamers playing online games in China, even more than the entire population of the United States. If you're surprised by the size of China's PC gaming market, you shouldn't be. It's been exploding in growth since 2001 when the total market was only worth 100 million. So since 2001, it has grown from 100 million to 16 billion. And you wonder why a lot of companies out there are fixated on China, getting approved in China, you know, getting their mark games in the market in China, you know, going through all these different publishers in China to get their games approved in China. This is why there are more people than the entire population of the United States on PCs. Get this, PC gamers. They didn't mention consoles or handhelds or mobile. We just talked about mobile, 70 million active daily users on PUBG Mobile. This is PC gaming. These numbers are staggering. In spite of the approval freeze, China's PC gaming industry still raked in 15 billion in 2018 with a total of 312 million PC gamers, 79.79 million of which actually were spending money on games. To contextualize that figure, the entire US video game industry, including PC, mobile, and console, only brought 30 billion in revenues in 2018. 
China's PC gaming alone brought 15 billion. And in the US, in the US, in the US, this is according to New Zoo, in the US, consoles tend to bring more money than PC. And we only made 30 billion in 2018, and they made 15 billion on PC gaming. Wow. 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 Nico Partners report also includes estimated revenues for Steam, which is becoming an increasingly important part of PC gaming in China. For the last few years, Steam has somehow managed to stay available to Chinese gamers while other servers like Twitch have been blocked. Through Steam, Chinese players can play games that would probably not be approved for sale like GTA 5, Grand Theft Auto 5. Over 24% of Steam users have set their language to simplify Chinese and China is the biggest source of download traffic from Steam. Now, if you played a lot of games on Steam, namely, I'm thinking H1Z1, PUBG, you know there's a lot of Chinese people on there. And I, I don't think they're doing it legally. I think they're, like they said, only 24% of Steam users have their language set to simplify Chinese. So I think they're 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 going in roundabout ways to get on Steam so that they can access games that are not approved by China. Earlier this year, Player Unknown's Battlegrounds said that Asia contributed to 53% of its $920 million revenue. That's believable. Oh, but only 24% of people on Steam have their language set to simplify Chinese. Yeah, there's something wrong with that. Here's some other inter interesting facts from this report from the Niku, Partner, Niku Partners uh, report. Foreign games account for 60% of China's PC gaming revenue in 2018. 60% foreign games. These are games made outside of China. China has 138,000 internet cafes. Esports is the strongest driver of growth in China's PC games market. Esports revenues was 6.3 billion in 2018 accounting for 41.4% of PC games revenue. It's projected to reach 9.5 billion in 2023. It's, 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 it's staggering. It's staggering on so many levels. I mean, the, the headline is staggering in itself. More PC gamers in China than the entire US population. Number one, I mean, we already knew China had like an uh, incredibly massive, incredibly massive PC gaming market. But to say <laughs> that this is uh, the thing that gets me is PC, is PC gamers. It's not all gamers. It's not consoles, it's not mobile. They're not including those in this report. And I believe this report. I actually do believe this report. This is one of the few reports that I actually can believe. Because I, I honestly believe that a lot of what we know about China's gaming market and what, what, well, what we think we know about China's gaming market, I think we're underestimating it grossly. I really believe there's like 10 to 20, probably 10 to 20 percent error in a lot of what we know. It's probably 10 to 20 percent more than what, we're thinking, what we think it is. It's massive. Because information doesn't flow that freely in and out of China. So we speculate a lot. And reports like this is like things that we clamor to for facts. But I really believe that it's being underestimated. Um, there's rumors that the Chinese government is recognizing this, that that they don't like Tencent because they think that they're getting people addicted to games when they should be doing other stuff. Which is why there's probably this year-long gaming freeze that's going on for game new game approvals so they can keep this uh, under control. That's why PUBG Mobile got changed into a patriotic game over there in China. 70 million daily actives. That's nuts. So check this story out, guys. Check this story out over on PCGamer.com. They got the details. There will soon be more PC gamers in China than the total population of the United States. Incredible. And for our next story, we're going to talk about Anthem. Anthem from EA Bioware. Anthem fails to meet EA's expectations, but gump company is committed to improving it. Um, EA has gone on record on their, on their call as of yesterday. They stated that 
Anthem did not meet their expectations despite having really good sales in the U.S. Their worldwide numbers didn't meet their expectations. Blake Jorgensen said that the publisher expected the game to sell between five to six million units by the end of March, but they didn't meet that. He didn't say what they actually sold, though. He said even more money was expected to come in the form of, of, of microtransactions, but they didn't meet that, apparently. He says the team is now very focused on continued improvements to the game and will then bring more content updates and in-game events that will enhance and expand the Anthem experience. He said, we believe in the team at BioWare, and we also believe that they set out to achieve what we also believe in, what they set out to achieve with this game building a new IP and melding genres to reach a new audience. Well, I got to say, man, Anthem, Anthem disappointed me in a lot of ways. It impressed me in some, but disappointed me in a lot. I was like a, I was like a disappointed father. It's like, son, I am disappointed. Um, there's, there's so many things that they could have done different. And uh, I was having this discussion in another stream today about Anthem. And we all agreed. It was like the gameplay was so great. It was just everything else was broken. And that was so true. Everything else, besides the gameplay, in terms of the combat, that's what I mean. Combat, the mission uh, mechanics of, of going out and shooting and using your abilities and working with others, the synergies of powers, all that felt so good. But everything else was just, just flawed in so many ways. I mean, we can go, we, we can have an entire podcast talking about that game and how, how many things it did wrong. And so many people are rooting for it. We want it to succeed. We want things to be better because of that combat. It's so addictive. It's so good. It's so, I don't want to say it's unique. It's just good. It's the best way to describe it. Just last week, Anthem developers said they remain 100% committed to Anthem following the delay of numerous anticipated features. There's a bunch of delays, by the way. One part of BioWare's commitment to improving Anthem is through the launch of a new player feedback environment server or test server for Anthem's PC version, which can only, you know, that's that's a good thing. It's expensive on their part, but if players participate and provide feedback, that could be a good thing. Um, but on the earnings call, he said that Anthem is the most digital game we have ever launched. That is the quote, most digital game we have ever launched. In regards to sale. And they said overall 49% of EA's full game sales across PS4 and Xbox were digital. Now part of me wants to think that EA just has. Just. uh, They set their expectations too high I think in a lot of ways. I think their, their targets and their numbers are way too high. Because the fact that this thing sold so much in the US. I forgot what the exact numbers were. But I was impressed. I was like Anthem sold that much? But I guess if you talk about spend and marketing, you know, how much they spent in R&D, you know, to recoup those funds, I guess they have to set their their targets that high. It's, it's such a weird thing. It's such a weird thing. And I, I don't know. I honestly don't know what they're going to do. At this point, I think a majority of Anthem needs to be redone, like scrapped. But I don't think they can afford to do a Final Fantasy 14, you know? That's a very expensive proposition. It paid off for Final Fantasy. It, re, it re, revitalized the game. But to scrap the game completely and start afresh, that's a very expensive proposition, especially with Bioware. Bioware is not the, exactly a speedy developer. You know, things are going to take a long time. They, they're going to have to do a lot more changes than that. So to the folks out there who say, oh, just start over, it, it's, it's not that easy. Not that easy. Check it out, guys. Over on GameSpot.com. They got the details. The sad state of Anthem, man. It fails to meet their expectations, but EA hasn't given up on it yet. And for our final story, we're going to talk about Monster Hunter World. Monster Hunter World is now Capcom's best-selling game ever of all times. It's amazing. Monster Hunter continues to be a big seller, says GameSpot. Dot com is Capcom's best selling game of all time. The publisher has revealed as part of the company's financial year of 2018 2019 results, 
It was confirmed that PS4, Xbox One, and PC RPG has shipped over 12 million units. Wow. Monster Hunter World continued to report strong sales, with total shipments breaking 12 million units, marking a record high for any single title in the company's history. Wow, congratulations to Capcom. Resident Evil shipped 4 million units. Devil May Cry shipped 2 million. Note the ship only refers to units delivered to retailers, not through to consumers. That's very important. Not sold, but shipped. Still a big feat. Still a big feat considering what's going on. These sales have helped the company record record uh, record record. These sales have helped the company record pre-tax profits of 18 billion yen, an increase of 13 percent over the last year now if you've never played monster hunter world it's a very very grindy game but it's a good grind that seems to be the theme for a lot of addictive games these days uh it's it's, it's a lot of repetitive fights you have a handful of monsters that you have to fight over and over and over again in the hopes that they drop the appropriate materials to build your next armor piece your next sword your next shield what have you and uh it has a very very successful formula monster hunter world has been around for years uh, mostly on mobile platforms like the Nintendo DS and uh, and other mobile platforms, but it's 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 a weird thing because I I got addicted to it. I played a lot of it. If you follow my YouTube channel, you know I had like two hundred, maybe three hundred episodes of my my playthrough. A lot. <laughs> it was a lot of play playthrough. Uh, but it got to the point to where I was like, man, is it worth it? Because the RNG in that game is so brutal. Is it worth it to, to kill a thousand monsters to get one or two drops? Even though the fights are amazing for the first hundred, 200, 300, 500 times. But then after a while, you, you question like, man, I could be spending my time doing something else. That's where I'm at with Monster Hunter World. I love the game, but I feel like the RNG is a little bit too unforgiving for my time right now. But congratulations nonetheless to Capcom. The game is knocking it out of the park. It's a fun game. If you've never played it, you'll get your money's worth. And, you know, hopefully you'll be like me and realize so many hundreds of hours in that, hey, maybe I need to stop now. <laughs> Check the story out, guys. It's an addiction. It is an addiction through and through. Monster Hunter World is now Capcom's best selling game ever. And that concludes episode 137 of Game Chat Born. I want to thank you all for listening. Please, please subscribe to my podcast, this one. Tech Talk with Buona and B Rants over at Buona.tv slash podcast. All these are available for your perusal over there. Tech Talk with Buona is recorded every Sunday. We talk about technology and science topics, whereas Game Chat Buona is focused on gaming news. And we also have B Rants, which are rants, a mobile form podcast where I just rant about any and everything that's on my mind. Uh, I think you might enjoy it. Follow me on Twitter, Twitter.com slash Buona, Instagram.com slash one on my youtube channel go check it out we're going to be doing some videos there we are we do <laughs> youtube.com slash buona and finally go to buona.live yeah that'll redirect you to my twitch page but i have a new domain now buona.live go check it out it'll redirect you over there my live stream we stream practically every day except wednesdays and sundays that's when i record tech talk and game chat and I also do some youtube video production if the topic comes up and I have the means to do it. Check that stuff out. I want to thank you all for listening to the show. Please, con- please continue to listen and tell your friends about the podcast. Now let them know. Give them the link. Tell them it's on Spotify. It's on iTunes. It's on Google Play. Let them know. Don't be shy. I'm not that crazy yet. <laughs> and I thank you all for listening to the show. Thank you so much for listening. I'll see you all next time. Have a great day. Bye-bye.